My name is Jean Andrés. I was born in Belgium, but I've been an Indian citizen since 2002. And I'm right now a visiting professor at Ranchi University. John, tell us about that one thing you care deeply about. Well, I don't know if it's a very well-defined question because we care about a lot of things and they're not also comparable in that way that we can rank them. But in the context of this meeting, I can say that one thing I do care about is the principle of solidarity. Uh, I care about the growth of uh, the principle of solidarity in everyday life as a human value. I care about organizations that are based on the principle of solidarity, like uh, workers' collectives. And I care about public institutions that reflect the principle of social solidarity, uh, for example, universal health care, uh, which is now a well accepted principle in many countries, but still far from a reality in India. And uh, it's unfortunate that in the dominant discourse today, these sound like old fashioned socialist ideas, because actually it's nothing more than the idea that in a good society, uh, people would help each other. Uh, if you think of it, our lives are full of contingencies over which we have no control, uh, or aptitudes, or health, or inheritance. Um, even our education, for that matter, uh, have uh, very little to do with, with our own merit. Even education uh, it depends more on inherited privilege and the efforts of our teachers and parents than on what we have done ourselves. So if our fate uh, is more a matter of uh, chance than of uh, our own merit, then it seems to me that those who are uh, more fortunate uh, should help those who are left behind. And uh, so when we do something about poverty, as many people in this meeting are trying to do, uh, I don't think that we're doing more than to accept the, pr the responsibility that comes with privilege. Uh, there's another reason why I care for the principle of solidarity, which is that it facilitates cooperation in social life, and that's also very important for me. Uh, if you simplify a little bit, you can say that there are three, thing, three ways of uh, getting things done in society. Uh, one is coercion, you know, forcing people, people to do something. One is competition, creating incentives so that you know, they do it on their own. And one is cooperation. And I think there's a lot of value in cooperation because coercion, of course, is an infringement of liberty. Uh, co uh, competition is an infringement of equality because those who win the competition tend to uh, forge ahead. And uh, cooperation is the way to reconcile liberty and equality. Uh, and if you think of it, most of the things that make life worthwhile can be organized, at least in principle, based on cooperation. You know, whether it's uh, sports, entertainment, healthcare, learning, and for that matter, even a lot of economic, produ economic production. Uh, so I think we have reasons to uh, try to foster the growth of cooperation in social life. But that does require a spirit of solidarity so that people are involved with each other and identify with each other's interests. So what are the challenges you face while you are campaigning for solidarity? Well, I think one challenge we face is the resistance of the privileged. You know, I think it's easy to understand that uh, those who benefit from the present state of things uh, uh, tend to have to rationalize uh, their privileges, or rather we should say our privileges, because we are also privileged. And, um, you know, that uh, doesn't necessarily take a combative form, but it, take, it often takes the form of a uh, uh, whole discourse whereby uh, underprivileged people are responsible for their fate, it's their fault, they are lazy, they drink, or in any case doing something for them will not help because the money will go down the drain and so on and so forth. There are all kinds of things like that that actually don't really correspond to any facts or any an serious analysis, but it sort of helps people to rationalize their privileges. Uh, you can see it quite clearly in the business media, with a, there's a constant barrage of attacks on, for example, social programs like the Employment Guarantee Act or the Food Security Act. Uh, and of course, some of the criticism may, may be valid, but mostly it's uh, poor analysis and poorly informed uh, gratitude attacks that are part of this uh, propaganda, if I can use the term, uh, this effort to create a climate that doesn't make social spending necessary because the corporate sector uh, tends to be opposed to it because if there's more social spending, then either there will be higher taxes or there will be higher interest rates or there will be less public money for what the corporate sector wants, like uh, handouts or infrastructure or whatever it is. So it's part of this effort to rationalize uh, the privileges. So I think that is something that we come up against quite a lot. So, so what insight did you get? Mm. You've been working in this for very long. What's the insight, well, the mature point? <laughs> there are many insights. I think one insight is that uh, uh, we should try to make solidarity the foundation of our own uh, efforts and movements. That's very important, I think, because uh, firstly, it will make us stronger, because very often we are weakened by our lack of solidarity among ourselves. 
and also it will mean that we practice what we stand for, which is also very important. Okay. So solidarity, cooperation, collaboration are words that we are hearing a lot at GAP, right? Yes. What is your view? How, how do you see it? Well, I'm happy to see this gathering because it, to me it's another manifestation of the uh, great willingness that people have to, uh, to give their time and their energies and their skills and to uh, do something for others and not just for themselves. Um, and it's particularly nice to see it coming from such different walks of life, from such a diversity of people from different backgrounds. Uh, some of them are from the corporate sector, some of them are from social movements, some of them are youngsters who are still studying or whatever. Uh, but they have that shared uh, idealism, if I can use that word. So I think that's nice to see. We will see what the different projects that have been discussed uh, will uh, lead to. But I think at least seeing that energy uh, is really satisfying. I saw you having conversations with a whole lot of people. Sure. <laughs> How has it been? Like, what have you been hearing? Is there anything that struck you as different, as anything interesting? What have you been hearing? There's a lot of people from everywhere. And well, I've learned a lot because uh, a lot of people in this gathering are firstly from quite a different background from the milieu in which I usually move around and also because uh, they have different interests and skills and they are doing things that I'm not familiar with. Uh, so I've learned quite a bit from, you know, talking to people who are engaged in very different fields from mine. So. Is there anything that you feel as you come out, uh, take away that you come out of gap with? I've taken away a lot of hope. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Okay.